Hey fellas, before we get in the video, I just want to quickly say that I'm not advocating for or encouraging the doxing, targeting, harassment, or bullying of any individuals that we mentioned or featured in this particular video, or this is an opinion piece of my particular commentary on the subject matter, however controversial as it may be. So, without that quickly say it, let's go ahead and start the show. Now to Joe, when you're up there, just remember, you're not doing this to show that you can. You're doing it for the views. And the children and America, but mostly for the views. Are you ready for this? Let me hear your war cry. <laughs> Spring break! Oh shit, I forgot my parachute! Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? To Japan, I'm back in action. Top of the today, but something else, it's not furry drama today. Shocking, I know. This actually goes beyond the furry fandom because it actually deals with, like, internet drama. And on everybody's favorite dumpster fire, Twitter, I couldn't help but spy and catch notice of a particular clip. I'm gonna go ahead and play it for you. Plays out like a scene right out of Grand Theft Auto or Just Cause 2, right? Uh, still moving plane in midair, pilot jumps right out, takes a swan dive as the plane like careens haplessly through the air before hitting the ground. And, you know, you'd think that it would like, you know, elicit an explosion, maybe even like plumes that could be seen from space or some shit like that. <laughs> Please step out of the vehicle. Where am I done you? Please get out of the Huge car. plume, a mushroom cloud. But no, the crash itself is actually pretty lackluster. I mean, it just hits the ground and breaks apart. And like, there's a couple of seconds that you can still see like the debris flying up as it like hits the ground. But no, that plane is fucked, yo. As for the pilot, the pilot got out safely, deployed the air chute. In fact, recorded his descent down to the ground. And like, you could see like his face. You could see like how calm he was under duress, having made a split second decision that he was going to abandon the aircraft. And it seems like a death-defying stunt. You know, an emergency turned, like, a good story. The guy actually saved himself from a bad situation. And, you know, he uh, lands on the ground. And in the original 13-minute video that's been circulating all throughout Twi like Twitter and YouTube, um, he can't help but just clasp his hands together and thank God and the universe as a whole. Saying that he was just so goddamn happy that he was still alive after making something like a, you know... Like, that kind of a descent from, like, up on high. Granted, he cut himself up pretty bad on some briar bushes and some various other vegetation in the dry brush. This all takes place in Los Padres National Forest, which I think translates to the Father's Forest, or the Father's National, like, Park or Forest. It's up in Northern California, so don't think that there was any, like, you know, risk of the airplane hitting somebody's roof or careening through a building or anything like that. Heavens fucking forbid. Although the possibility of it hitting like you know local wildlife is entirely on the table anyway that's not what happened um the airplane makes a crash landing obviously but the pilot's still okay right the problem is now he's in the middle of butt fuck nowhere and he has to make it like an eight to ten mile like hike back to civilization and like the whole time you can just see him in various like clips and scenes on the fucking video saying I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, it's hot. And then, like, he hears cows, he takes a couple of sips of water after seeing, like, minnows were living in the stream, 
which was his by his estimation it's like hey the water's clean should probably be drinkable i'm just gonna scoop my fucking lips right up to the edge of this stream and drink it the fact that the cows were nearby there's a strong likelihood that those cows took a shit in that stream but hey if you want a bad case of montezuma's revenge i guess it was an emergency after all um, but eventually he finds a good Samaritan on the side of the road and basically pleads his case. Basically states, hey man, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I, I was flying my plane up in the Northern Hills and it crashed. I bailed out at the last second and now I'm here. <laughs> Can you take me back to civilization, man? And, you know, the good Samaritan being a good Samaritan, he hears out a story and obliges, presumably taking the pilot back to civilization. But who was the pilot exactly? Well, that'd be none other than one Trevor Jacob. That's, in fact, the uh, name of his YouTube channel, Trevor Jacob. And, you know, over the years, he's garnered something like 139,000 subscribers, which is not too shabby. The guy was always well known for doing death-defying stunts, extreme sports like snowboarding, because he was actually an Olympic champion, um, having competed back in like the Winter Games in 2014. He scored ninth place in snowboarding. I don't know the specifics about the whole thing, I just know various little tidbits of information that kind of distinguished himself as being who he was and what he was all about, but um, throughout the video, and there was like the original 13 minute video, it's literally titled, I Crashed My Airplane. Um, the guy seems well enough. He certainly looks the part. I mean, he seems like toned, well, like built, fit, like as in he works out and like actually takes a jog around the neighborhood, um, you know, actually lifts. He looks pretty good for his age. I mean, he's like, what, pushing 29 or something, think something like that at the time of the video. But um, yeah, so he has all of this footage because throughout the duration of this whole incident um i sort of glossed over a lot of details but just think about this this was over the course of eight to ten hours um condensed into about 13 minutes so you see the takeoff of the airplane you see it in midair you see him jump out you see all this other stuff happening um you know and he posts this video to youtube and when various aeronautical individuals out there that are a little bit more savvy than I am about judging, like, you know, the flight patterns and, like, you know, the conditions of the aircraft and things like that, um, they couldn't help but feel like the video was a little bit sus. You know, as in, um, Trevor Jacob portrays all this as an emergency, okay? That the fucking airplane in midair suddenly ceased to function, that the propellers stopped, the engine stopped functioning, the plane became unresponsive, in spite of his best efforts to try to, like, you know, improve the situation so that he could actually safely land this fucking plane, um, fucker just abandons the fucking thing. And more recently, a ruling was made against him that he got 20 years in jail for that. Nah, it wasn't for that, but um, that was the visceral reaction that a lot of people on Twitter had because they're just like, but why? You know, people would demand to know. It's like, why would crashing an airplane result in such a high prison sentence? It's a victimless crime. Was it his airplane or somebody else's? Was it a rental? Like, why would it garner so much, like, you know, time in jail? Well, things aren't as obvious as they may appear to be. Um, I will just like to state that, you know, when you abandon an aircraft, that fucker is going to glide through the air for a while. Um, it could possibly land on a car, crash through a roof, land on a person, heaven fucking forbid, or damage local wildlife. I mean, th th this is all plausible, you know? There could have been hikers out there, there could have been campers out in, like, the wilderness of Northern California. You never know. Um, so, like, the... You know how, like, laws are geared towards the possibility of something happening because of your reckless wrongdoing and actions? It's kind of like that, but that's not even why he got 20 years in jail, alright? If you're curious as to why, the whole thing was a hoax. Thanks, Captain Obvious. It was staged. It was all for the views, which... You know, I guess it's a better excuse than being for the pins, like what Zercalo tried to offer to Lyo Convoy and fucking Coyote Lovely. But still, it's, that's disgraceful, right? And, like, Trevor Jacob, he stuck with his story for a long damn time because, like, various YouTubers out there expressed 
you know, reasonable doubt in light of his claim, stating that this seems like it was an entirely avoidable incident. And like various little hints throughout the video, let alone the title of the video itself, I Crash My Airplane, would kind of like hint at the fact that this was all staged, okay? And Trevor Jacob, I watched the video in its entirety. He seems strangely nonchalant throughout the duration of the video. Yes, he does narrate what's going on for like the sake of the viewers, but at the same time, like how comfortable he seems, like it was all premeditated. And the fact that like, there's so many cameras pointed into the cockpit from like outside of the plane. For instance, one was like clipped onto the wing, one was clipped onto the tail fin, one was inside the cockpit, one was strapped to his chest. That's an excessive amount of cameras, don't you think? Like even if this is what you're well known for, like going out and about, on top of the fact that people couldn't help point out that he was also wearing his chest harness, which as like, you know, it's for skydiving, okay? But it's also got a parachute affixed to the back. And there was only one other video I could recall that like Trevor Jacob actually took the time to put on his like harness and parachute before a flight. Because there's like plenty of videos out there where he's just like, he eschews all that, just wears a t-shirt in the cockpit, you know, in spite of the fact that there's the, uh, you know, inherent possibility that a accident could happen. Maybe a seagull hits the engine and it conks out or something like that. You don't know what's going to happen up there. So like I said before, this all happened back in 2021. So it's not like this was so recent that it happened just yesterday. But the clip, I never even saw until Saturday night. And like the time that the actual video itself was uploaded to YouTube was December 24, 2021. And, like, if this really was all for the views, because Trevor Jacob, when questioned later, he comes out to say, Oh, it was for a sponsorship deal, man. It was on the table. I just really, I just had to make the jump, man. I had to do this. Um, I don't think the sponsorship deal even exists. I think it was, like, contingent on the views. And if his goal was to do all this for the views, he failed miserably because he's only gotten about, what, 4 million views, give or take. It's about 3.9.5 like, like, million views. So about 50,000 views away from like a full even 4 million. But still, that's not that great for like a channel of his size at 139,000 subscribers. On top of the fact that like his contemporaries, they easily like surpass that number in less time, like a couple of months and stuff like that. So if this was all for the views, Trevor Jacob really needs to reevaluate his business uh, model, but regardless, um, various people took interest in the video itself and the fact that Trevor Jacob insisted that this was the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Because, you know, um, repeating a lie thousands of times, that's going to make it true eventually. Well, not everybody was so pleased with his responses because as various other people became aware, so did some federal agencies like, you know, the FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, or the National Transportation Safety Board, or NTSB. Um, they started to, like, ask questions, and they're just like, yo, bro, um, do you have any idea how much collateral damage your little stunt could have created? Like, you know, if this was a little bit more of a populated area. And, you know, Trevor Jacobs is like, mm, yeah, well, it was an emergency, man. I had to jump out. It was either me or the airplane. And I chose me. So, fuck that airplane. I survived. I got my daily dozen. And I'm happy. And, like, as people were expressing more doubt, he acts like he's a survivor turned victim because he would just plead his case with various people that would listen out there. But more and more people were making videos just sort of dissecting and psychoanalyzing every aspect of the story that he tried to present. So it didn't exactly convince anybody that this was anything but staged, okay? And now that you got the attention from federal agencies, that only adds to the amount of scrutiny that's levied onto Trevor Jacob and, you know, his whole debacle. So, if you actually watch the video in its entirety, he does actually locate the crash, and he actually examines the wreckage, and he just can't help but, like, ex be dumbfounded at how much, like, destruction it actually caused. Now, like I said before, it didn't cause, like, plumes of fiery explosions that could be seen from space. Although, it'd be exciting if it did. Um... It was just a fucked airplane, dude. Like, the whole thing kind of crunk crunkled in on itself. He was actually going over there, supposedly, to look for water, which is a legitimate, like, you know, concern when you're in the ass ends of nowhere, right? But at the same time, like, uh, his acting in that, like, whole 
you know, trek through the wilderness wasn't even that convincing, at least not to me. I don't know about you all. Um, try showing one of your friends that has no idea any of this happened and ask them what they think of the video. Like, if they notice anything weird or funny, and maybe they'll be like, yeah, it seems fake as hell, bro. That's what I would imagine somebody would say. But all that to say, um, now you have federal agencies that are actually examining, like, you know, Trevor, Trevor Jacobs, like, story, and they're, like, you know, conducting an investigation. Now, Trevor Jacob, he would pull various gimmicks to try to, like, distance himself from the guilt and the reality of the situation. For instance, he, like, puts on a fucking shirt and, like, you know, that says, Oh, never forget to wear your parachute. Always wear your parachute. Acting like he always wears his parachute, even though that there was, you know, you know, visceral evidence to the contrary. That there were several videos floating around out there that he didn't fucking wear a parachute for. He was just flying that airplane without a parachute inside. You know, anyway. They start to get to asking questions, and it was like through a combination of various things that they sort, of lear- sort of learned about the situation that they sort of determined that this whole thing was staged, okay? It just seems so perfect, you know? Um, and if you actually, like, examine his behavior throughout the duration of the video, the fact that he was already wearing his parachute, the excessive amount of camera use, on top of the fact that one thing that I know for a fact, because I've actually been up in the air before, um, you have to maintain contact with air traffic control. And, like, when his fucking airplane just stalls out, um, you know, just becomes inoperable, the propeller stops, the engine stops, and all that stuff, what he should have done was actually call into, like, air traffic control, report of the situation, even, like, a quick mayday, mayday, this is Red Team 6, we're going down, man, um, even then, and, like, the, the fucking airplane wasn't actually under the influence of turbulence or anything like that, like, as in, it wasn't shuddering or anything like that, it didn't look visibly unsafe, it looks like it was just peacefully gliding along, you know, and, like, any pilot worth their grain of salt, they could actually, like, take that fucking plane and just, like, you know, attempt to land, you know, like a glider. And, you know, if you're wondering, like, why he didn't do that, well, he he wanted it to crash for the views. But anyway, um, there was plenty of, like, areas that were relatively flat, open, um, could serve as an improvised landing strip. Granted, it's probably gonna fuck up the wheels and, like, the stems holding the wheels to the airplane, but... Um, yeah, he didn't exactly attempt any of that, okay? He didn't call into air traffic control. He didn't reach out to any other pilots that might have been out and about for, like, a Sunday flight. Uh, he just fucking, like, you know, let that fucker crash and burn. Well, it didn't really burn, but it crashed. And, like, people on Twitter couldn't help but notice that. Hey, like, what if, like, this landed in some dry brush. What if that caused a forest fire or something like that? There was no forest for a while, although the concerns about a brush fire, plausible. (laughs) I mean, like, what if, like, the fuel caught on fire if there was any left? Because what I I have this sneaking suspicion, and I'm not, like, a a pilot or anything like that. If you're curious about my time in the air, it was because uh, a friend of mine that's local to me, he actually took me up for a flight years ago, and the whole time I was literally clutching, like, my fucking seat with my fingers till my knuckles turned white. And, like, the turbulence that day was something else entirely. Like, for instance, in my head, as far as, like, my imagination goes, as we were taking off the runway, I was just imagining that a stiff gust of wind would blow the fucking airplane right back on its back. And that, like, you know, we wouldn't die or anything like that, but we would, we might get injured or something like that. Um, as far as the altitude, it was about 5,000, 5,500 feet up in the sky. And, like, I was jokingly saying something like, yo, bro, if there's, like, if this turbulence kicks up anymore and this rickety plane starts to go down, um, you think we'll have time to grab the parachutes? And my friend actually advised me. He said, like, that's the last thing that you want to do because um, unless you're experienced as in, like, d- jumping out of an airplane, there's, like, the likelihood that you'll hit the tail fin. So that's not advisable at all. And that, like, you know, he was a, he imbued me with confidence that he was a skilled enough pilot that he could manage to, if there were any engine troubles or anything, like, wrong with the structure of the airplane, that he'd probably land that in the field or something like that, and people could come get us later. Um, so we make the trip. It would be about three and a half hours if you're, like, 
you know, driving on the road in bad traffic, but it took about 45 minutes in the sky. And honestly, for the most part, apart from the turbulence, it was a pretty peaceful trip, and I was absolutely impressed by the fact that my friend knew all of these codes that he could relay to air traffic control, maintain regular contact, contact with them. Um, he would notify them if there was any change in altitude, as in he would go up or, like, you know, below um, his spired, like, you know, altitude, because... That was one way to dodge turbulence, and uh, if you're curious as to where we were, it was at, like, you know, Aberdeen Airfield um, to Ocean City, and then back, because uh, Ocean City was kind of dead at that point, but it was a really peaceful day, and we actually had some good Italian food when we got there, and, like, the trip back, I don't remember too well, I just remember, like, the first time being up in the sky like that, and I'm not actually afraid of flying, right? Um... I've been, I've traveled all over the world, like, throughout the years, notably to various furry conventions out there, but, um, like, you know, the thing about, like, jumbo jets, which is, like, the typical way, or, like, puddle jumpers, even puddle jumpers, the relative size gives you the illusion that it's safer than, like, a small little airplane, because this was, like, a relic from the 1970s that was sort of rehabilitated to be, like, airworthy, and that's why he took me in, so I know what it's like. The one thing that I remember the most is that there was, like, this acrid smell of, like, you know, smoke and, like, you know, the fuel burning in the background. But um, other than that, he was a pretty skilled pilot. And uh, he actually told me that he had to get rid of it because um, even though he got it for a bargain, it cost, like, a fortune to get airworthy again. And he wanted to get something newer. Dude's a suspiciously rich furry, and I won't reveal his name here right now, but I'll just say that it was awfully nice of him to just take me out for a day in his airplane. Anyway, back to the story. So, I remember, I'm like, I mentioned the FAA and the NTSB, right? Because uh, they're very interested in what Trevor Jacob has to say. And the first thing that they ask him is, hey, where's the airplane? To which Trevor says, I don't know. Like, he literally just did not, like, know where the fucking crash site was. At least, that's what he claimed. Because, um, you know, he says, like, he doesn't know where the airplane is. It's out in, like, the hills of, like, Los Padres National Forest. Uh, you know, might be a good place for you guys to look. So here's what Trevor Jacob did. He actually hired a friend who had a helicopter to airlift the debris up to, like, the hangar they operated at. And he ripped the fucker apart, you know? And, like, before you go patting him on the back and trying to say that, hey, at least he's not littering, he cleaned up after himself. So that's got to count for something, right? That's not why he did it. Um, see, that, that airplane was evidence, okay? Which is the linchpin to why he got 20 years in prison, okay? So, um, he gets 20 years in prison because he obstructed a federal investigation as to whether or not this was intentional, like a staged event, hoax, or whether it was a legitimate emergency, okay? And by that point, they already knew because they revoked his air license, something that you can reapply for after a year's time if, like, you know, the review board or whoever, whatever bureaucratic administration deems your application worthwhile. Um, in his case, because he, like, did all this, like, fucking went out there, got the debris of the aircraft, like, got up all the debris, all the fucking wreckage, brought it back, tore the fucker up, and he actually, like, disposed of it in, like, industrial trash cans. Don't think, like, you know, your trash can that you put out to the side of the curb every Wednesday. Think, like, shit that you put scrap metal or fiberglass into. Shit that's big. He tore the fucker up himself to try to dispose of the evidence and feign ignorance after the fact. Something that didn't exactly uh, inspire much confidence in the World Wide Web, let alone the FAA, who weren't too impressed they did that. So that's where the 20 year sentence comes from. It was only at like, in facing a 20 year sentence that he actually came clean. Finally, the mask had slipped, He like the ruse was exposed for everybody to see that he was a lying pe sack of shit, that he staged the whole thing for the views, but also a sponsorship deal that was probably contingent on the views and may not even exist, okay? And, like, my favorite thing is that somebody on the Twitter thread posts, like, Your Honor, my client didn't know he couldn't do that. To which, like, somebody responds, it's just like, Oh, he didn't? Well, in that case, case dismissed. You can all go on home now. To the cheers and jeers of everyone in the gallery. But, honestly, that is fucking atrocious, right? Like, 
This just convinces me that people will do just about anything for the views, okay? I don't know Trevor Jacob from Adam, but the fact that he was willing to sort of, like, jeopardize the well-being of anybody that might possibly have been in the area, let alone himself, just for the views in this, you know, alleged sponsorship deal. <laughs> like, he was about to willing to do anything to pick up his, like, lackluster YouTube career, okay? And you he, he just gotta, like, you wonder, you know, uh, I, I can just imagine him cramming the fucking debris into like a trash can. He's like, come on, get, get in there, fucker, get in there, fucker. And then, you know, FAA comes over. Hey, buddy, where's the wreckage? We'd like to take a look uh, as part of our own investigation here. I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand how he thought he could get away with this, you know? His, his own very community are the people that were like the loudest voices in the room, basically dissecting everything that he claimed had actually happened. The aviation community here on YouTube. Um, you know, real professionals that probably have hands-on experience piloting airplanes and shit like that. Or they study them. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, because this was all planned from the start, that Trevor Jacob only filled his tanks half full for, like, what would be the duration of his flight. Okay? <laughs> So, um, I'm just going to go ahead and agree with the FAA and the NA NTSB. Uh, Trevor's actions showed a fundamental lack of judgment and were needlessly reckless, okay? How did he think he was going to get away with this? Well, he clearly didn't. He didn't think too hard ahead because, um, yeah, 20 years is a long time. But it wasn't for crashing the airplane. It was for the obstruction of justice. Yeah, you don't fuck with federal agencies like that and expect to get away with it. Especially if there's anybody out there that could sort of, like, incriminate you and, like, showcase what you did um, to, like, the online space. Let alone, like, legal agencies and law enforcement out there. And, like, the very title of the video, I Crashed My Airplane, isn't that kind of an admission of guilt from the very get-go? I think it is, but I, I, I know it's, like, literally what happened, but still, come on. Like, you couldn't think of a more, I don't know, original title to all of that, something a little bit more eye-catching. It's, like, it's clickbaity as hell, but I would imagine there's other people out there that have uploaded similar titled videos. And they were probably, like, legitimate accidents. What an absolute waste of a life. You risk your own personal safety and destroy your own aircraft and credibility for some sponsorship deal that may or may not even exist, post the footage to YouTube in a bid to hoodwink the entire online community into believing that you're some savant that, like, saved yourself from a bad situation. You lie, you deny, you repeat the lie, until the feds get involved. And then, while staring a 20-year prison sentence in the face do you admit it was all a stunt for the views it was just a prank bro it was just a prank well his credibility certainly died about the same time as airplane did didn't it so yeah um whenever you're confronted with stories like this i would highly encourage the rest of you all to exercise due diligence and professional skepticism in just about any story that catches your notice. And hey, don't take my word for it. Look into it yourself. Like, there's various news stories out there that have sort of, like, been disseminated far and wide. Some of them written quite well, actually. But, um... Thankfully, the aviation community here on YouTube was there to set the record straight and get the ball rolling on the investigation, exposing Trevor Jacob for the fraud he was. You know? <laughs> so... Yeah, I think that's just about all I can really say on the topic. Um, if you have anything else that you'd like to mention, just go ahead and post in the comments. You know, I will read them. I don't always respond to comments, but I certainly read them. And they actually afford me a little bit of reference for the next video that I plan to do. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed the video. Till next time, guys. Take care and peace. I hope you all have a better one. Go ahead, have some fun.
Hey, fellas, thanks for watching the video today. I really hope you all enjoyed it. Or did you care hit that like button to strive for more? You know, I really appreciate that, right? And hey, if you're in the mood for game, why don't you check me out on Twitch sometime? Link in the description below. Anyway, till next time, guys, take care and peace. I hope you all have a better one.